Hey guys, it's Smurfs. Welcome back to my channel where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. In today's video, I will be doing two things. One is a book haul. All of the books just came in a few days ago, so really excited to share them with you. But I also have something to unbox with you, even though it's not really going to be an unboxing. I'll explain why. So I got a letter for one of my bottle boxes from the customs office. I had to go down to the office, which was really far away, and pick it up and pay whatever I needed to pay for it. So I go there, but they actually wanted me to open up the box, take out everything. So I had to open everything there in this office and it was, you know, it was a little awkward because one of the books has a pretty intense title. And uh, also I was like, oh, you know, I can't really enjoy this moment because I have to do it here. But anyway, it was fine. So let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to like and comment down below what you think of the books that I picked up and the unboxing, not unboxing, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And yeah, let's go. So there are a lot of books to get through today, so I'm gonna try and go fairly quickly so we're not here all night. I did leave the drinks out of this one since you guys already know what they look like. They're the same every single time, but it's tea, coffee, and hot cocoa. I got a really cute packaging of um, this dark chocolate, it's zesty orange, dark chocolate bar. Sounds really, really good. Also got this really freaking cool pin. It's a skull spider on a spider web. Also got a sticker. It is a devil or maybe, I was thinking it might be a devil, but it could be a Krampus. We got a microfiction bookmark. It has a character on one side and I think it goes with the short story because it says everyone meets the bleak man. So I like this idea if they're going to keep doing this where they have some sort of illustration of the story on the bookmark. I would totally love that. So this was the book when I took it out of the box in front of the um, customs lady. <laughs> It, it's a psychic teenage bloodbath. An extreme horror novel, okay? Like, I was just like, please, please don't let her be able to read English, but I, I'm sure she got the gist of it. But this is the new release for this um, box. It's by John, Carl John Lee. This is a girl who goes into a coma and she's in it for like a year. She wakes up and it is time for revenge. <laughs> and this is totally not my type of thing. Um, I kind of think of like uh, Lydia from Typical Books and Alex, maybe this is more their type of thing. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of liking this revenge thing. And the, the way that she gets revenge is like she has these psychic powers, so she's able to control your mind. So I'm kind of actually into that. So not in my comfort zone, but looking in, looking forward to it. We got an older release. This is Alma Katsu's The Fervor. This one takes place in World War II in the United States. This is the time when they were interning Japanese Americans and Japanese immigrants. And this has a supernatural theme to it. I have mentioned before that this is something that I've always kind of stayed away from because I didn't know how I was going to feel about it because my grandmother was in the internment camps during that time. And like, I don't know, I just, I feel like I would think about her a lot, you know, when I was reading this. So I'm not sure, <laughs> like, I think it would be like more emotional, I think, of a read than I would want it to be. But it is here and has made its way to me, so maybe that is a sign I should give it a read. For the used book, it was Sarah Payneboro's The Language of Dying. So this is a story about grief and waiting for someone to die. Um, I don't know much more about it based on, on the back, but I do have one other Sarah Payneboro book. I think it's called like, I think it's like a supernatural thriller, but I, I started reading it and I, I had a hard time getting into the writing, but maybe this will change my mind. And there's one last thing here for the Abominable Box, and I hope they continue doing this because I think it looks great. So this is a custom Abominable Book Club signed edition. So this is for the Carl Lee book. It looks great. 
I love it. The quality is just really nice. It's thick. And I like that it has the Abominable logo on there. The book club, book club signed edition. It just makes it a little bit more special than just like the paper one. So I love this and I hope they keep doing it. So let's get started on the book haul. This one is called For Rye. This is by Gavin Gardiner or Gardiner. But I think this was one of my indie books episodes and this was a patron's pick and i was like i really want to get this and, and pick this up so i was really happy that they had it here this is fairly new it's 2021 this is about a woman who is on the brink of suicide and she needs to go back to her hometown to deal with her mother's murder someone murdered her mother and she wants to know who and her hometown is this mysterious place that just has a lot of secrets, just, you know, one of those places. So it's not easy getting information, but she meets this author who somehow is able to kind of guide her through that madness. Not really sure what that means exactly, but it seems like this author has something, I don't know, maybe otherworldly going on with him. And there is a mention of evil and stuff like that, so I'm hoping that's gonna be really exciting. The next one I picked up is The Red Queen. This is the second book in the Alice series that Christina Henry um, writes. Um, some people have told me that the, besides the first book, Alice, the other books weren't as exciting or maybe just not, um, not as good as Alice, but I still want to keep going on this journey and see it for myself. So I picked up the Red Queen and in this story, Alice and Hatcher have escaped the old city. They're looking for his daughter and they have to face the White Queen and the Black King while Alice is trying to make an alliance with the Red Queen. So I hope this is as gory and brutal and dark as the first one. The next one is a little bit of an outlier. I. I don't know, I felt like taking a risk on something, I guess, but <laughs> this is called The Outside. I'm gonna really butcher this author's name, so I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say it, but you can see it right here. This is Russian horror fiction, and this is actually a story that started with Reddit's no sleep community. The font is huge. <laughs> it is humongous, <laughs> which actually is kind of be really nice for me to read at night because I read with this like little like uh, LED kitty cat lamp. It, it's a it's a it's like a child's lamp, but it's perfect because you can charge it and take it anywhere and it has a range of different colors. So I just sit there and I put it right here and I just, I read in bed and it's perfect. It's so good. So this will be really nice for nighttime reading. So this story is about a young man who wakes up to find that his front door has been welded shut overnight. But here's the kicker, from the inside. Evacuation sirens begin to go off, but of course nobody can evacuate because their doors are welded shut. But that's uh, really nice and convenient because there's something trying to get in. So who knows about it? Who in the building knew about this? I think it sounds fun and interesting. It's not usually my thing, but I, I do like the no sleep stories. So. I think this will be cool. I'm, I'm curious as to what the creature might be. Now this one is going to be a little bit of an odd bunch in this group because it is not a story or a novella. It is a historical book about the gothic village or town of Whitby in England. This talks about Bram Stoker and how Whitby was an inspiration to him when he was writing Dracula. There's St. Mary's Graveyard, which has a lot of unique headstones. There are the monks of Whippy Abbey, the ghost stories, of course. It talks a little bit about the architectural details like gargoyles and things like that. So I thought this looked pretty cool and it has a ton of photos and pictures. I really like this image though. It says the 18th century woodcuts show what superstitious people of the time believed ghost spirits and hobgoblins look like. And it just cracks me up. Like, what is this guy? Is this like a, a turnip with chicken legs? I have this book called The Restorer. It's by Amanda Stevens. This is a book about a woman who is a multi-generational cemetery 
restorer. Uh, so her father did that and now she does it as well, except that she has some type of ability to see ghosts. One day while she's working in the cemetery, she stumbles upon a dead body. There's something really special about this body though. It has a lot of um, symbols that are cut or carved into the body and she's able to figure out what they are, which means that she needs to figure out this mystery, this murder mystery now. But it sounds like her getting involved with ghosts before has been kind of tenuous. So she's not that she's reluctant, but she's very wary and cautious. This is a series. It's called the Graveyard Queen series. The next one is called Verona, a ghost story by Benedict Ashford. So this is, this is about a couple who are not able to have children, but they go to Italy and something there connects with them or I mean, not leeches onto them, but you know, like, like, like sticks itself onto them or something. And I have a hint that it might be a child or a baby spirit or something. So I'm not really sure what to expect with this one, but the synopsis on the back has sort of this like kind of literary feel to it a little bit, you know, a little kind of uh, dreamy in a way. So I think it might be sort of a, an emotional and touching read perhaps. So only two more, um, Sarah Rain, The Whispering. This was a library book, so it has this nice little cover on the top. They did rip out the um, library card, which I don't think they needed to do, but whatever. Now this one is a little bit like historical, like fictional, historical, supernatural, I guess you could call it. This is about a guy. I don't know if he's a researcher or what, but he decides to travel to this place called the Fossa House that at one time was a convent and had this Palestrina choir. And he's going there to trace the origins of this choir. But once he gets to this house, he realizes that yeah, it's spooky and there's something going on here. He sees this shadow man and he sees like some sketch from 1917 that sort of looks like him. So is this a shining vibe, you know, like, oh, this is where I was always meant to be or something. I don't know, like there, there's something connecting him to this place. And of course there's a storm, he's not able to leave. So now he is forced to stay in this house and he's gonna have to face it. Now, the last thing that I got was Gallows Hill um, by Darcy Coates. I posted this on Instagram and there, there were some people who were like, oh, that is my least favorite Darcy Coates book. And uh, I was like, oh no, oh no. I mean, some people liked it too, but I was just like, oh no, you know, like we'll see, I guess. So this is about a woman who returns back to her childhood home because her parents were murdered and she needs to take care of the funeral. She needs to manage the estate and figure out what's going to happen to the winery that's been in her family for so long. But once she, once she gets there, she's kind of starts remembering like how weird this place was and just all of the strange anomalies that it had, like hidden passageways and, and things like that. And as she's remembering things about the house, these horrible memories or truths or something are coming to the surface. So that was my un-unboxing, non-boxing, and my book haul. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to take care of yourselves. Please look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.